Hello everyone, I am Amanda Cooper and in the studio with me today I have the Women of the Movement segment honoring the 50th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King's Jr. assassination. Today in the studio I have Movement, the civil rights wife of James Orange, Mrs. Cleo Orange, and her beautiful daughter here, Jemida Orange. Thank you so much for coming today, ladies. Thank you for having me. <laughs> today we're going to do an interview and you'll have privy to the whole, ca capture the whole moment here live at uh, the V103 and WAOK studio. So, right. so I'm going to stand back here and allow you ladies to talk, okay? All right. So where were you and your family when Dr. Keem was assassinated? At the time of his assassination, it was just me. I wasn't married. Uh, I was in the SCLC headquarters office on Auburn Avenue. At that point, we were getting ready for the Poor People's Campaign. And it was the week that there were five of us that had to work the 24, 7 24 shift that week. And we were in the, uh, still at the office on that day. And when we got the word that he had been shot. So I was in the office. James was in Memphis with him at that time. Because I think what is important to note that there are some of the wives and the women of the movement that were, like my mom was already in the movement when she met my dad. Um, she, came out of, she came out of Tuscaloosa. He just happened to come out of Birmingham. And, uh, and so people think that she met him. No, she was doing her own thing. He was doing his own thing. And so I think that is a distinction, at least in their story. Now, if you ask me, I was, technically I probably was in Memphis with my dad because I wasn't here. So, so um, yeah, so I didn't come along that time. So that day I've gathered information just by, I call myself the keeper of the elders. And so I gather that information just by staying with them and listening to where they were on that day. Just like everybody else, I absorb it from them. I think I have a, I have a, I have a, an advantage to where every now and then when I have everybody together, I ask different questions that I know people would like to know. And so, you know, that's when one day I ask, you know, mom and, Miss Lula Williams, where were they during that day? Where were they? And what happened when they got the call? You know, that was that was an interesting conversation to say the least. Wow. And I know this is still kind of difficult for some of the other this period is kind of difficult for some of them right about now. Wow. So when you got the call, mm -hmm. what 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 emotions ran through your body? Originally, well really it wasn't um one of the young ladies was on the phone with Hosea Williams, taking dictation. And when all the chaos happened, and she dropped, Jose dropped the phone. Then when she tried to get him back, she couldn't. And there was this young man. My office was in the basement, as we called it. And the PR director and this young man who worked in the mail room came and told us but we didn't budge because he played a lot. So finally he kept coming back. The PR director went upstairs and then he called and confirmed. So we were still in the office. And the weird thing about that day, about four o'clock, it got pitch dark here and stormed. The streets flooded because in order, we couldn't get out of the office even if we wanted to because the street was flooded. We couldn't go anywhere. And it was pitch dark at four o'clock. Tell about the day before, tell about the day before. The day before he left. Dr. And King. this was unusual for him, Dr. King. Normally when they've been out and come back, they come around, hug and kiss all the ladies in the office. But instead, he did it before he left this time. 
And that was a bit unusual for him to do that. And he told y'all he loved y'all? Yes, he told us he loved us after he kissed us. And he'd see us. And he left. I got that story. I thought that was profound. That was profound. It's almost like he sensed something. Yeah. A man that spiritual and that connected to God. Yeah. He sensed something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did he ever mention that he sensed something or that? The only time that I think he knew it and sensed it was his last sermon at Ebenezer. When he did his sermon, drum major, was it drum major for justice or drum major instinct? I can't remember, but it had something to do with the drum major. But I can't remember the exact title right. of it. And from that sermon, I gather that he sensed it. Mm. That's powerful. I'm, I'm seriously, I'm, I'm welling up because mm -hmm. it's just um, emotional, like you said earlier. Mm -hmm. After so many years, it still touches your heart yeah. and it saddens your spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and I can only imagine how, how, how you feel being so close mm -hmm. to him, to your husband, to the movement, to the civil rights movement in Atlanta and in Alabama and Tennessee. Um,